here to conduct worship and to be in worship with you this evening. Um, we're doing some special things uh, this evening. In particular, um, uh, Sandy Gordon is being honored today, and you're going to have to come back tomorrow as well, uh, <laughs> because uh, she's retiring for like the third time as our choir uh, director. And so, um, um, this evening, we're going to be lifting up and celebrating her ministry here at First United Methodist Church in Morris. Do have a few other announcements to lift up for you as far as um, our flowers. They are given by Sandy uh, in memory of Roger. So um, thank you for that gift in memory of Roger Gordon and also for our radio broadcast Virginia uh, Serino, 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 Serino um, has sponsored our radio broadcast for this evening. And Verna Ripschich, is she home? So she's home. Okay, let's lift that up as well. Um, there are many other announcements uh, in the bulletin. But I would like to invite if there is someone here to tell us a little bit about what on let's go. Oh, okay. You know what I'm gonna say I'm asking? ERT? Okay, all right. Um, we have a number of folks who went and did some ministry in our ERT, which is emergency relief team. Early relief team. And so I guess you went, you know about what happened. So thanks, can you, uh, if we got the cameras going, because uh, we don't, they're not going? All right, so. Just keep going, okay. Uh, so a group of us went to southeastern Kentucky. We just got back yesterday. Um, we were going for flood relief. Uh, there was big floods about three weeks ago. So Colin Monk, Randy Miller, Jim Wright, and myself uh, went down there for this past week and we worked on a few houses. Uh, we did the best we could with uh, the time we had. 
there is still a lot of cleanup to be done, uh, but there's there's a lot of uh, a lot of good things happening down there, and a lot of other groups there helping. So on on uh, behalf of the early response team, we would like to thank the congregation for your prayers and generosity. Um, it is it is awesome that we are able to do this, and we couldn't do it without you. So thank you. There's special people that we talk about, uh, people who run towards disaster rather than away from it. And uh, these are the type of people that when something happens, they actually run towards it to help others. So those are very, some very special people. So, you know, let's offer applause for all of them who are really doing great work in communities that have been devastated. We see, it, we see it on television and go, oh my. They see it up close. And it's a lot more challenging up close uh, when you get close to things like that. So thank you. Thank all of them uh, for, for what they've done. We may have other, we, we want to include the people in Kentucky in our prayers, but we also uh, may have other prayers that people want to lift up. So. I'd encourage you at this point in time, if you have any joys and concerns, there's a card that you can fill out and you can just pass it forward with our ushers um, following our song of praise. Uh, we'll enter it into a time of joys and concerns. So would you stand as we sing together? Thank you, Lord. before you today and there's just one thing that I want to say thank you up joys and concerns. Uh, if there are no um, concerns or joys mentioned uh, in, and written down in the cards, 
Uh, if you have them, please pass them down and then we can lift them up in prayer. If not, then let's start by, do you, do you have one? Okay, then I think somebody will bring that over to me uh, as I pray. Uh, but let us start with silent prayer. I think it's very important that we lift up our joys and concerns in privacy of our own hearts and uh, spend a few moments in silent prayer. And then we will come together for pastoral prayer where I will lift up these concerns and then we will pray together the Lord's Prayer. So let us pray. Our gracious Heavenly Father, we come into your holy presence. According to your promise, where two or three are gathered in my name, I will be among you. We claim your presence with us this evening. Lord, we give you thanks for the many joys that have been expressed among us. A joy in a celebration of Sandy, who has committed many years of her life, Lord, to share her gift of music with children and adults, especially in this church, Lord. We give you thanks for her gifts. We give you thanks for her life and for her love to serve you in your church. We thank you, Lord, that you were with the ER team who had have arrived back safely, back from doing all that hard work in Eastern Kentucky. We thank you for many those of those who are still there and helping those who are affected by flooding. Bless them, Lord. Strengthen them. Provide for them. And bring their lives back to whole. Lord, we also lift up concerns that were mentioned this evening. Concerns for those couples who are going through divorce, those who are suffering from cancer. Lord, you know them personally. And those also, Lord, who are not well. Lord, we come to your throne of mercy and grace and lift them up, asking for you to reach down your healing hand and touch them. Heal them in both body and soul, Lord. 
and we ask that you hear our prayers this evening, those spoken in words and those that are still in our hearts. Hear our prayers, Lord Jesus, because indeed we come into your presence with all these concerns. Hear us as we also say the prayer that Jesus had taught us as we pray together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. This is a Sunday where we get to say thank you. Uh, thank you for the many gifts that people give. Uh, Sandy's gifts are being lifted up to uh, thank her. Um, when people give, we need to say thank you. Uh, when people sacrifice, we need to find the words to say thank you. So, uh, Pastor Isla, thank you for last week because right before I was to leave to uh, visit my sister and my mother, a long-term member of our church passed away and you had Mission U and all sorts of things going on last week. And normally that would mean I couldn't go, but you were there. So thank you for being there last Sunday so that I could be uh, away um, visiting my family. But the only reason, well, one of the only reasons, one of the, one of the reasons <laughs> is that because you are so generous supporting both of us, uh, we, can, we can do these things. So your, your many gifts and sacrifices make possible all the things that we're doing. Uh, both of our ministries, uh, ERT is a wonderful ministry, and of course our music ministry. And so we need to be able to say thank you for all those things. So for all the gifts that have come our way this past week, whether they're gifts through the mail, um, whether they're electronic transfers or a gift that you brought here tonight, we want to say thank you for each and every gift. Shall we stand for our dedication of those gifts? Gracious Lord, one of the ways in which we give thanks to you is through what we do, the gifts that we offer. Um, some of them are hard to give. It's difficult to get up and interrupt your life and go to Kentucky to work all week, taking care of others. It's difficult sometimes to give financially. It's difficult sometimes to give when things get tough. But it, things are only good because of the sacrifices that are made. It's the sacrifices that make good times and good experiences and loving and healing possible. So we thank you for every good gift that's been given and look forward to the blessing that comes from the gifts. Amen. You may be seated. I usually don't speak. I usually hide but they sort of got me. We, in picking this song, we thought of Sandy because she has served very much here for a long time. She was always very patient. I know she was here when I started 35 years ago and I was a little green, but she was very patient and sometimes choir members, they were talking and not paying attention and she could have got a little cranky, but. Sandy never did. And um, I know she has gotten like Steve. She went over to Steve's tire over there and she said, I heard you sing 20 years ago and here's Steve. And it's like, Greg, I heard, I heard you singing. I think you can sing in the choir. And Greg was like, no, I don't read music, but there's Greg. 
and yeah, Greg says, no, I'm not going to do this anymore, and here's Greg, <laughs> and um, you know, Sandy always went to disciple, Bible study, she, you'll see her at the Bible studies that are here on Wednesday mornings, she traveled with her music to Sunday school room to Sunday school room and taught many songs. Some people tell me that that's the only way they know the books of the Bible because she did that. And there was another song, I think Zacchaeus, that they remembered because of her. So this is why we chose this song. And um, Sandy, we will miss you and you are my partner in crime and very easy to work with. Thank you, Sandy. Thank you, Sandy. Thank you. That was beautifully sung. <laughs> Our scripture this evening is taken from Psalm 67, and it's the whole Psalm, verse 1 to 7. May God be gracious to us and bless us, and make his face to shine upon us, that your way may be known upon the earth, your saving power among all nations. Let the peoples praise you, O God. Let all the peoples praise you. Let the nations be glad and sing for joy, for your judge the, po the peoples with equity and guide the nations upon earth. Let the peoples praise you, O God. 
Let all the peoples praise you. The earth has yielded its increase. God, our God, has blessed us. May God continue to bless us. Let all the ends of the earth revere him. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. From the beginning of the church, no, before the church, there was music. Music was shared in the early church whenever they gathered together. In people's homes, people would stand and they'd sing. And they'd share that with God. And they'd praise God with their music. But as you know, even before those uh, hymns that were sung, there were the hymns that we find embedded in our own scriptures, the book of Psalms. As we know, the Psalms are a list of poetry that is set to music. Psalm 67 begins in fact, with these words that were not read, it begins with these words, for the director of music, that would be you, for the director of music with string instruments, a psalm, a song. Before each psalm, there are these directions, for the director of music. We read the psalms, but in their more original form, they were thought to be most appropriate when they were accompanied with music. They are, if you will, the lyrics. And so we read these words that the actual intention was for these psalms to be part of the music that people would share with one another. It's not simply scripture to be read, although that's typically how we uh, receive the Psalms, but they intended it to be more, more than just reading, that it was also to be music to be sung. So what's the difference between simply reading and singing? Why should it be necessary? Same words. The words don't change because you sing them. They don't change because they're music. So why would we bother to set things to music? I mean, one of the, the most interesting things, is if, if you take time, and we don't, take time and read your hymns. If you were to take the time to read the hymns that we sing, they're amazing theology, and they say such profound things. But it wasn't enough that the words be read, they were set to music. How much different is it when we sing these words, may God be gracious to us and bless us, and make his face shine on us so that your ways may be known on earth, your salvation among all nations. Wonderful words, but I wonder what it sounded like when those ancient Israelites sang it. For music sets are not only intellectual part of us, but our spiritual and emotional self. It sets those parts of us free. It's a way to vividly share the scriptures and not simply read them. That when we sing, when we share things in song, 
there is something special that is released in us, expressed in us. That, if you will, praise, and it talks about praise here, may the peoples praise you, God. And that's very different from, may we all praise God and tell God how much we care about God and uh, how wonderful he is. Versus singing it. It is a release of our spiritual life and our, and our emotions and our feelings that oftentimes are muted. Our faith can be muted, but you know what can bring out our faith, release our faith? Our music. Don't you think a teenager who's listening to their music isn't releasing something powerful within their lives? You don't see them sitting around and just talking the, the lyrics. Well, rap's close to that in my mind. <laughs> but music releases it, re releases the words, releases the feelings, releases the spirit, and then you can praise God. Have you ever heard a child, I'm sure you have, walking around singing? They're unaware that you're listening, but they're singing. How beautiful is that? That they're expressing things that they feel, the words that they've heard. Maybe they've learned a song in church. Maybe there has been a choir director who has placed these words in music into the life of that small child, and that child walks around singing it. You don't hear them walking around saying it in order to feel it. They need to sing it. We need to express ourselves vividly for us to really feel the power of our faith or our life. And this past week, and thank you, Steve, for taking care of my truck. I got there and back. Not a problem. Yeah, so I figured I should check it in before I went. Yeah, it did, it did great. And I drove it into the woods, my truck because uh, there's Kex Woods, and I drove my truck into the woods, got out, and I have some videotapes of it and things like that. And I don't know if it's just the time of year, so much life flying around, literally flying around. I couldn't take videos because there are too many butterflies in front of my camera. Butterflies and all sorts of life, and and locusts and, and all, the, all the sounds of this time of summer were, were just filling the air. And if you, for me, though, that sound is like music to me. Standing in the middle of this forest, listening to the sounds of life around me. To me, it sounded like praise. It sounded like music. It was an expression of life that I'm glad I didn't miss, that I stopped. It is that expression of life in music that I think we prize so much. It's the sound of life in the church. Just as I heard the sound of life in the woods, here in church, the sound of life is the music that we sing. It's us not holding back. Not holding back on our feelings, not holding back on our faith, not holding back on the things that we think and feel, desire, the joy, the sadness that might be in our life. If we sing it, 
It releases it. Music is essential, has always been essential to faith. It's how we share our faith with each other. It's how we praise God. There are other ways to show our faith, of course. But never without music. That's how we praise. How many have heard little children walking around going, let it go, let it go. Thankfully, they don't do it as much as they did at one time. But it's that kind of thing with music. I, you, can sort of, you can see them, they go, let, and then they start to act it out. Let it go, let it go. To a certain extent, when we sing and we sing of God, we're letting it go. We're letting our faith go. We're expressing it where so much of the life, uh, much of our life, we're muted. And our faith is muted. But the truth is, people like me, I need your help. I am not musical. But when I am, something special happens. I need help to be musical, to sing and praise God. I need help to praise God. I'll just put it that way. When it comes to music, and so all of us need help to praise God. And it comes in the form, oftentimes, in the form of our music director at church, who is helping us praise God. They're letting us let it go and to sing. So that's why we have people like Sandy. That's why we need people like Sandy. We need you. This church has needed you for a very long time. We've depended upon Sandy to loosen our voices, raise our spirits, so that we can praise God. As it says in Psalm for today, may the peoples praise God. May all the peoples praise you. May the nations be glad and what? And sing for joy. For you rule the peoples with equity and guide the nations of the earth. May the peoples praise you, God. May the peoples praise you by singing for joy. Sandy, for so many years, you have been uh, leading the people in praise. You have been setting free the joy that God asks us to express. We thank you for all that praise. I was given a, a history, though, of your time here helping this church. Praise God. that you were a choir director here helping this whole church praise God for 17 years, retiring in May 1991. Wait a second. That was quite a while ago. And it even says the retirement celebration was in September 1991. Um, so you obviously came out of retirement. Like Michael Jordan, you couldn't stay away and they wanted you back. And so you were hired back in September of 2000, right? And you retired a second time, as if I understand this correctly, in May of 2004. But that didn't last because Michael Jordan didn't come back three times, only came back once. But you came back yet again to lead this church and the congregation in praising God. In September 20, uh, 2012, you came back. And we want to retire you again, but I don't know if that's going to work. It doesn't seem 
doesn't seem to last long. <laughs> but you have blessed this church over and over again by setting loose the, the voices of this church and the music of this church. You've enabled us to praise God and to feel joy. And so it's time for us to thank you because thanks is the, the way that we recognize that we've received. We've received again and again and again your many gifts. And the only way that we can respond is to thank you. And it is as inadequate as it may seem, um, it's what we have. And the only way that we can properly express our gifts that we've received through your ministry is to thank you. And I have that Gail wasn't feeling well, so she, she sent a card and um, a little brief note. So I'm going to share that with you. The celebration team would like to honor Sandy with a small token of appreciation for her dedication and hard work. We are thankful for all her years of making our church services inspirational with the music she has chosen and conducted. Thank you for honoring God in such an awesome way. Do we have any of the pictures? Uh, we went through we went through the um, archives, and there you were, and there you were, and there you were. You have been a part of this church and its ministry for quite a while, and some of you might recognize people in some of these uh, pictures. Is that you, Cheryl? In those, the, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, how many people have been touched by your music ministry in this church? Could we even guess? Was that your first retirement? Yeah. <laughs> I think there's a couple more. Yes. And I think there's one more, is there? Music by Sandy Gordon. You have been the music of this church, led the music of this church for decades. And I'm the most recent pastor to be part of the church here, and I haven't had the pleasure of, of hearing you con conduct a choir, but given your history, I will. And, you know, while I was out there in the woods, I stopped by and picked up a few gifts and I thought of you. I have no idea whether you drink wine. And you really shouldn't get wine from a pastor, a Methodist pastor. <laughs> okay, so I bought some other things, but I wanted to give you this. Uh, I don't know if it's any good. I've never had any of it. But I, I like the... Um, I, I like the, um, what do you call that? The label. Thank you. Thank you. I like the label because it is uh, Kecksburg red wine. So this is near Kecksburg, my family home. And I stopped by and I bought a number of things. So you can trade this in for, for uh, blackberry jam or all sorts of peach, peach salsa and things like that. I, I bought a lot of stuff. But I did, I did want to uh, offer this to you as my gift, along with this card. That you're going to keep. I'm not sure about this. 
Or would you like to say anything? All right, I'll hold. Come on up, can you get her? Is she in the, you want to turn towards everybody? It was in Sunday school that I first learned the joy of singing. I'm sure I was two. I remember my first solo was at Christmas time. It was Twinkle, Twinkle, Little Star. <laughs> and I remember being on the stage with the bright light shining on me and Mrs. Hickson down below egging me on. <laughs> so church music has been important for a long time. Uh, What was I going to say? <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> uh, it has been very important. And yes, this is my last retirement. <laughs> All right, I don't know if I want to hold you to that. <laughs> but but it, it has been, I'm sure, many, many pastors pleasure to have you direct the choir and be a partner in worship and ministry. It has to be important to somebody else, too. Yes, it does. <laughs> it does. So I'm going to let you um, have both of these, and you can trade that in tomorrow for something else. It's kind of like, the, I don't know, the price is right or something. You trade tomorrow for something else. But go ahead and keep these. And does anyone here in the congregation just feel compelled to say something? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hand this to you folks. No. I just wanted to thank Sandy because when our oldest, Kyle, do you remember Kyle? <laughs> yes. And I, I mean, I'm his mom, and I didn't even know he could sing. And we were in bombs when bombs still existed. And you came up to us and you asked if it was okay if Kyle would sing in the children's Christmas thing, you know? And he did the carpenter song, he did. It was beautiful, and that, I'm sitting in the congregation listening to my son, and I'm going, oh my gosh, he can sing. I didn't even know, you know? So when my dad died, he did a, a duet with me. And he still sings to his kids, but he used to have four octave before his voice changed. Then for a while he had two note, and then he got, he got some back. But uh, it was because of you, and thank you. There are so many that aren't here who have been blessed by your ministry. But for those who are here, would you show applause for her? Kid. Do Lord, yeah. There is a there is a teacher at Morton High School down where Brian lives, who grew up here, and can still sing the books of the Bible song, and I hope she's not the only one. I use it all the time. Yeah. Well, thank you again. And you know what? Let's do this again tomorrow. Okay. All right. <laughs>
May God be gracious to us and bless us. And may his face shine on us so that your ways may be known on earth, your salvation among the nations. May the peoples praise you, God. May all the peoples praise you. May the nations be glad and sing for joy. Amen. Splendor of the 
sin with a trumpet, praise God with a lute and more. Praise Him with the cymbals, praise Him with your dancing, praise God to the end of days. From the nation, sing of your Lord's goodness, melodies of praise and thanks to God. 